Welcome back, gamers. Today we are doing a tier list of every Anya Taylor Joy movie. I've been a fan of Anya Taylor Joy for a while now. Um, I just think she's extremely talented, and I really, really like a lot of the movies that she's done. A lot of really interesting movies, a lot of really well done horror movies. She just has this like really dynamic presence uh, in 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 film, and I think she's really cool and really pretty. And I love her weird eyes. Her eyes are so so cool and weird and intense. One of the things I that I really love about her is she can communicate so much with just a look. Um, she's great, and, uh, Furiosa's come, she's coming out, I just saw it last night, and I'm like, it's time, perfect time to rank all of the annual Taylor, Taylor Joy movies. I was really, really excited for Furiosa, it was, it's probably my most anticipated movie of this year. I rewatched the trailer a bunch of times, which I haven't done with the trailer in years, I usually try to just avoid trailers altogether, especially for a movie that I'm excited for, because I don't want to know too much going in. But something something about Furiosa just got me jazzed, just got me fucking hyped. And I was also really, really curious to see how Anya Taylor-Joy would uh, take on this role specifically, because she's playing a character that has already been established as is playing a younger version of a character that we already know from Mad Max Fury Road as Charlie Theron. And I thought it was a really interesting casting choice because Anya Taylor Joy doesn't really look like Charlie Theron at all. Um, that's kind of, I think, the appeal of a part of the appeal of Anya Taylor Joy is that she doesn't really look like anyone, but at the same time, she has a really big presence and like an intensity about her. So I was really, really curious to see how she would portray Furiosa and how this movie would compare to some of her other work. So we're going to go through all of the movies and TV of Anya Taylor Joy and rank them. Uh, now I'm, this isn't. Technically, this isn't all of them. This is all of the ones that I've seen. She's done a few other movies, and she's appeared in a few other shows. This is all the stuff that I've seen, and I've seen a good amount. I've seen at least a good amount of her stuff in a lot of her, like, bigger uh, roles. But, like, for example, you might notice that the Playmobil movie is not on here. And I have I have not seen that, so I'm, I, don't, I don't know if it's, a, if it's, if, if that's a secret sleeper hit or whatever so if you comment below if there's any anna taylor joy movies or shows that i should check out that i haven't seen already but let's get into this and start ranking things first up we got the 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 vivich the viv v v v vich the, um it's i think that's an easy s tier right excellent horror movie uh robert eggers his first direct direct directorial debut because he was like a production designer or something before that. Excellent horror movie. Really, really, really great. And of course, Anya Taylor Joy is kind of the standout. This was her big breakout role. And she's excellent in it. And uh, and super young, too. Um, she was like a teenager when they made this. It's just really, really good. Uh, it's, it's the, it's the, 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 the check, check it out. Split. Um, so this one is the first movie that I saw Angel Taylor Joy in and obviously the big talking point of this movie was uh, James McAvoy's performance as you know guy with multiple personalities and he's really great in the in that role of course but I do think that Angel Taylor Joy is also a standout in that movie even uh like she is the she's the she's the final girl and she's the protagonist in that one um, so she does have a lot of stuff and a really interesting character with a lot of depth to her. But yeah, she's a standout even even going up against James McAvoy in one of his most interesting, if not his best role. And I think that's also an S tier. I think it's it I think it's that good. Again, it's it's something about her her weird eyes and uh, the way she can communicate so much with just a look. Like there's this moment at the very end of the movie 
after she escapes from the bad guy and the police are like, oh, your uncle is here to, to pick you up. And um, they've established that her uncle is abusive. And she just gives this look like this, this like death stare. And it's incredible. So yeah, I think S, S tier, easy. Thoroughbreds. This is a movie that I saw and I remember that I really liked it. I don't remember what it's about or what happens in the movie. Um, it's like an indie drama thriller, I think. I remember thinking it was pretty good. I remember really liking Anya Taylor-Joy's performance. I don't remember what happens in the movie. <laughs> um, and and so I think, I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to go with B and, and call it there because I, I don't. I don't remember this movie at all, <laughs> but I remember that I liked it, so maybe it's good. I don't know. Check it out. Let me know. Glass. So obviously the sequel to Split, kind of, um, which ties this into Unbreakable. Um, I'm a little mixed on Glass. I remember really liking it, although I think it probably has the most stupid stuff in it of the, the Unbreakable trilogy. And in terms of Anya Taylor Joy movies, it's good, but um, she's less the focus in this one, and she isn't really doing anything more interesting than in Split. So I think we I think we're gonna go with B for that one as well. Um, that feels right. The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. This is the Dark Crystal prequel series that was on Netflix. And your Taylor Joy is in this, which I forgot about. Um, I really love this show. I think it was fucking awesome. Incredible like puppet works, great uh, visual effects, and just so creative and interesting. Surprisingly deep and compelling characters. And Anya Taylor-Joy plays one of the characters. I think one of the main characters, and I don't, I, I don't really remember that. I don't think she was bad in this or anything, so I'm not gonna like. I don't think it necessarily needs to lose points. And I did really like the show, but it's another one that I kind of forgot that she was technically in. Um, it's it's one of those it's one of those actor voiceover roles that could probably be played by anyone. Not that, yeah, again, not that she's bad, but not super duper memorable either. I think another B, maybe C, because like, I don't know. From an Anya Taylor-Joy perspective, which is what this list is, I don't think this is a, this is a, a necessary watch from that perspective. So I think I'm going to go with C. Even though I really like this, if I was just judging the show, it would be an easy, easy A to S tier show but we're not we're judging it on into tiller joy usage so c emma this one i actually watched the other day in preparation for making this video because it was one of the her bigger movies that i hadn't seen yet and i felt like i should give it a, uh, a shot and it's something very different from the stuff that i normally watch um this is a jane austen adaptation i'm not very familiar with jane austen so you can yell at me in the comments if uh, this move if this movie is a good Jane Austen or not. I have no idea. I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. It's 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 good. It's a good it's a good it's a good movie. It's a good story. It's good characters. Bill Nye's in it. He's always great. I really loved um, Mia Goth's character in this one. She kind of stood out a little bit more than than Anya, um, but uh, I still thought it was really good. So and I remembered it. I re I re there's a scene where she gets a nosebleed like an anime character and I remember and I really liked that part. I thought it was funny. So, I'm going to say A. <laughs> New Mutants, that one X-Men movie that kept getting delayed and then got then Marvel bought Fox or Disney bought Fox and then they didn't know what to do with it, so it just eventually got dumped in theaters and I think it had a bunch of reshoots and stuff. And there's Taylor Joy's in this, remember? She plays um that one character who has a sword, I think. Actually I should know this. She's 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 from the comics. Um she's a she's a she's a bigger character there. 
Um, I think she's like Colossus's sister or something. I don't know. I, I it's a it's it's I like the X Men, but she, unfortunately, she's a character I'm not as familiar with. Um, and she's doing this weird Russian accent that is not very good. Um, I think her performance is fine. Again, I don't think it's she's. I don't, I don't think I've seen anything where she was bad in it, but uh, was also not very good. So. Also, the movie's not that good, and yeah. My friend Katie pointed out that Anya Taylor-Joy would have actually been perfect as X-23, and they didn't do that. They cast someone else as X-23, and then they did cast Anya Taylor-Joy, but as this other character in New Mutants, which was not very good. Um, so, they done goof. I agree. She would have been perfect as X-23. That's a great... That, that should have been the role. She has, like... That's that's the type that's the type of role that Anya Taylor Joy is would have been would have been great in, and they could have they could have done it, but they didn't. So D tier. I I guess there's still time now because I I personally think they kind of have to reboot the X Men if they want to do them at some point. So if you're restarting, get Anya Taylor Joy. Why not? I guess she's a little bit old now. A little bit older now to play X twenty three, like to play her as a teenager. But like, oh well, just just uh, just say that just 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 say that she's older. Just have her be a little bit mid, a little bit older than that. There you go. Queen's Gambit was the big Netflix show that everyone was on about a f few years ago when that came out, and uh, it's great. It it's really good. Um, she it, and your Taylor Joy is, is excellent in it. It's mostly just a drama uh, about chess and like coming of age and growing up and stuff dealing with addiction and that kind of stuff it's really it's a really solid show and uh Anya Taylor Joy is excellent in it she gets to really delve into this character and give this really great performance and she gets to kick asses at chess and that's fun pro tip for watching this show Skip the first episode because Anya Taylor Joy is not in it, and also you don't need it. You can get you, you you can skip straight to when she shows up. In fact, in the second episode, which I think is like halfway through the second episode, that's what I did, and uh, and the and the show was just as good as as anyone else's uh, experience. Some people may say, "Oh, you, but Danny, you're stupid. That doesn't make any sense. You gotta watch the first episode because that's what we establish all this important backstory of how she learns to be good at chess." And you know what I say to that? Fuck you. I don't care. Anna Taylor Joy wasn't in that episode, so I didn't watch it. Um, and you don't need it. You get everything you need to know uh, by the second episode when Anna Taylor Joy shows up. She's good at chess. You get it. It's it's great. You can watch it from there, and uh, it's still a ten out of ten show. So I think we got to go S tier. It's it's great. It's really good. Last night in Soho, I did a video about this recently. So go check that out for more. Um, I'm mixed on this movie. I really want to love it, and I like it a lot. It's a it's an Edgar Wright joint, and he's trying something a little bit different. It's a horror movie. It has this uh, interesting mechanic where Thomas and Mackenzie is getting like flashbacks of Anna Taylor Joy in the 60s. It has a lot of really great style. It's shot really well. It's got cool sequences and cool use of music and some really great dance numbers. Um, Anna Taylor Joy gets to sing and dance and, and wear fun 60s outfits. Um, it's really good, but it's not perfect. And for that... I think it gets, but I still really like it, and I think Anya Taylor Joy is really great in it. So I think, I think, I think, I think we gotta go. I think we gotta go like A, like top of, top of A ish. I don't really do. Some people will be like, oh well, I gotta put it at the top of A, so you know it's the best of the A tier or whatever. I don't really care so much about that. I'm more just like these movies are all S tier or whatever and you can move them around and that doesn't really matter to me. I'm not too picky on on where specifically within the S tier or whatever tier things are. And that's not to say that like one is that they're all exactly equal either. It just like 
I don't know. I don't know that it, uh, some people get really finicky about like, ooh, well, how, you know, where does it rank within the tier? It's like, well, that's not the point of doing a tier. So that just, you just do a numbered list then if that's what you want to do. The Northmen, another Robert Eggers joint, and this one's about Vikings. It's based on Amleth, which is the story that it, Hamlet is based on, and uh, it's really fucking cool. Uh, I really dig this movie. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm something about Vikings and Viking mythology. I think is just really, really fascinating, and I like a lot of that stuff. I like that Vikings have been kind of uh, in in recent years, and uh, yeah, it's really good. Uh, Anya Taylor Joy is also great in this one too. She gets to be uh, cool and sexy. This one. Uh, one of one of the hottest uh, scenes of Annie Taylor Joy in, in any of her movies in in this, and she has some really great moments. Also, she's just got this again, got this really exaggerated intensity to her, and yeah, it's really good. I think, but is it as good as like th- the trifecta of? Is it as good as S as some of the other S tier roles? Uh, I'm not sure. I think more just because it's she's not the central focus. She's an important character, and she has a lot of really great moments. But it's really more about the Northmen than about the North Lady, and so I think I think we're gonna go A for this one. But still a really great movie and a solid performance. Peaky Blinders, specifically seasons five and six, the only seasons that feature Annie Taylor Joy, and the only seasons that I watched. Because she's not in the rest of the show, and therefore I don't give a shit about it. That's right, following the same logic of Queen's Gambit, where you can skip the first episode, I think you can skip the first four seasons of Peaky Blinders, and just get straight to when Annie Taylor Joy shows up. Now, maybe that's not as effective of a strategy in this as it was with Queen's Gambit, I'll admit. However, I do think that having just watched the last two seasons of this show, it's still a really great show. Gillian Murphy is in it, and he's excellent, uh, as usual. And he really gets to, like, dive deep into this morally gray character who's this, like, gangster, British, this British gangster in the 20s and 30s. And uh, the last couple seasons specifically, because our more into the mid to late 30s era it's also about like the rise of fascism in in europe and killian murphy's character thomas shelby keeps making like more and more morally ambiguous choices throughout and until he's literally in bed with nazis (laughs) and uh it's really it's really good it's a really good show uh, Anna Tiller Joy is a pretty minor character uh, in this series. She, <laughs> she shows up late, and she's really not the focus at all. Um, however, I do think she's still really, really solid. I think she has some... She just has, like, m- this movie star quality about her. She has a, a lot of intensity and, and brings such a big presence to each one of her roles that even though she is a very very minor character <laughs> in this show every time she's on screen i'm 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 really into it i'm tempted to give this an a even though it's not it's it's maybe the least anya teller joy thing on this list so far you know what fuck it i'll put it in a i don't even care <laughs> yeah whatever I, it's good it's a good show is, should I go watch the rest of the show? Probably, but I'm not gonna, because Anna Taylor Joy's not in it. Okay, the menu. Uh, another great horror movie from from our from our boy, from our gal, <laughs> Anya. Um, it's great. It's really good. However, I don't think it's as good as some of the other movies on here. At least from an Anna Taylor Joy perspective, she's really good in it. And her character does have uh, a more depth than uh, what it seems like initially, and she is pretty interesting. But I think uh, like the clear standout is is Ray Fiennes, and Nicholas Holt is also really great in it. There's some other minor characters that are also really fun and compelling, and Anna Taylor Joy does her part extremely well in this movie. But it's not. 
on the same level of like a split or a witch where she's like really really gonna blow you away but it is still a really good movie i don't know we'll put it in a i, I feel like i have too many things in a now maybe i should move these around a bit yeah whatever it's my list go fuck yourself the super duper mario brothers movie and it's our joyous in this and i watched it um this, you, see, you can even see her right there in this poster for some reason is heavily, heavily features Peach for some reason. This one is the closest maybe to like a bad performance by her. I don't know. Not a bad performance. It's more a mid to whatever performance because it's, it's like, it's such a simple movie that it's pretty much like you could have got pretty much anyone to play Peach in this movie. So bringing Anya Taylor-Joy to it, like, doesn't really add anything. She's not bad in it. She does a decent job with, like, a pretty simple character. But, like, it's kind of like, why why her specifically? A lot of the casting choices of the Super Mario movie were kind of weird. Most of them were fine. A couple of them were actually really solid. Uh, Jack Black, of course, was great. Um, but Anna Taylor Joy was just such a weird choice to me, and I'm a huge fan of hers, so I want to see her and stuff. But like, I, I just, I feel like it's kind of a waste of her talents and her whole aesthetic. Like, it's, it, it's, it's, it's such a strange choice to me, just because it's like it doesn't really fit with any of the other stuff that she's done, other than maybe Dark Crystal, because it's like, well, she's, you know, she is a voice. So we can get her to be a character. It's like, okay. I don't know. C tier, I guess? No. Uh, I think D. Yeah, I think we gotta go D. Okay, Dune Part 2. This is sort of technically a spoiler, but whatever. Angela Joy actually has a brief cameo in this movie. She plays um, Alia uh, in a vision that Paul gets of the future. This is... Paul's unborn sister in this movie. And I think she's a perfect choice for this character. Uh, I think it's really smart. You also get the the benefit of of the of the fact that she's Anna Taylor Joy is looks kinda weird. And a a Alia is a really fucking weird character. And she's got the blue eyes, and Anna Taylor Joy's eyes are really weird and interesting. Um, but she's barely in this movie at all, and if I was just ranking the movie, I think it would be an easy S tier. It, it, it rules. I, I, I'm, I don't have a hot take on Dune 2. I thought it was great. I agree that it was a good movie, but we're not ranking whether or not it was a good movie. We're ranking whether or not it was a good Anna Taylor Joy movie, and because of that, I think we got to give it an F. There we go. That's, sorry, she was barely in the movie at all. It's, and she had like three lines, so F. Maybe uh, maybe this can change in Dune Three, but for now, no good. Finally, Furiosa, a Mad Max movie. I saw this last night, and it's great. It's excellent. Uh, George Miller's done it again. Somehow, this near near eighty year old man is the leading one of the leading leaders in in action directing. It's both. More of what you liked in Fury Road, and also a completely new type of thing. Fury Road is one long action scene. Um, this is, as it's described in Odyssey, it's it's this epic journey through like reinterpreting mythology and doing all these kinds of things. We get a lot of, of backstory of Furiosa, of course. It is a prequel. But even then, more so than I thought. And it's really great. Uh, yeah, I, I loved it. And how is Anya Taylor-Joy? Uh, she's excellent. She's, she's so good in this movie. And a huge part of that is her weird fucking eyes. So much of her character in this one, like, barely speaks or... So she has to communicate everything with just her eyes, and she does it flawlessly. Um, she has this huge intense... Again, this, like, huge intensity. She can communicate so much with just a look, and in this, like, crazy revenge movie with weird Chris Hemsworth in 
uh, doing doing a really interesting and compelling villain, and Furiosa is there and she's kicking ass and being a cool badass. Um, and uh, she Andrew Taylor Joy is great in it. It's really great. Yeah, uh, I loved it. Is this slightly recency bias? I don't know. Maybe, probably, but whatever. I'm gonna put it in an S. It's my it's my list and. I, I, I really think she was excellent in this movie, and I don't think it would have worked on the same level without her. Well, it would have still worked really well because the action was so good. But I do think her, her performance is that strong, really just because of how much she communicates with her, just her eyes. Um, she's that good. Uh, and this movie rules. It's so cool. It's so fucking good. It did not disappoint, even though I was worried I was gonna over I was gonna get overhyped and then not have it live up to my expectations it was not exactly what I expected but I kind of really dig that because that's got a very different vibe than than Fury Road even though um it also is very similar to Fury Road and is uh a a very very prequel e prequel but it's good it's a good prequel you can make a good prequel turns out we've had a we've had a couple now um, and, uh, this is, this is that. It's great. Yeah, I am very tired, and I'm gonna go to bed now. But that's my list of top ten Annie Taylor-Joy roles. What are your rankings of Annie Taylor-Joy movies? Leave, leave a comment. Have you seen Furiosa, Fury Road, the Mad Max legacy of driving cars? Good. Let me know in the comments your favorite Annie Taylor Joy scene. That's 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 this video. Annie Taylor Joy, I like her. She has cool eyes. <laughs> bye, bye, bye.